is your identifying mark. That's what your brand is. So make sure you get that down. Your identifying mark. It's what makes you different. Remember, we've been talking about this throughout this program. Mm -hmm. We talked about strengths, skills, passions, what makes you different, what, are you, what makes you unique. What is your identifying mark? Now, most of the times we think of brands, we think of companies. Some of the most recognized brands in the world are also some of the most valuable companies in the world. Brands are connected to market, marketability. Okay. So make sure you write that down. Brands are connected to marketability. So just like a company is more profitable, the better their brand is, so is a person. And really, when I ask about your personal brand, I'm asking what makes you different, what makes you unique. What makes you stand, makes out? You stand out? So one of the things that people do is they say, I do this just like them. But people don't get paid for their similarities, they get paid for what? Their differences. You get paid for your differences. So your brand is connected to your difference, but you're going to get paid according to the differences you bring, not your similarities. I've heard people say things like, oh, you know, I have a restaurant and I'm starting it up. And, and, I, and I fry chicken just like up there, Kentucky Fried Chicken. Well, look, if you do it just like them, I'm going to them because they're established. Right. Don't tell me that you, you're doing it just like them. I heard this lady say that. I sing just like Aretha. Well, yes, we're going to buy Aretha's album because we know Aretha. We don't know you. <laughs> Show me how you're different. People who are able to do well in branding are able to do different. Now, I'm going to tell you a quick story about Ruth Handler. How many people are familiar with her? Who? Ruth Handler. So Ruth Handler actually had this great idea. In the world where there were Barbie dolls, excuse me, where there were dolls, but all of the dolls were babies. Ba of course, babies were playing with them, but the only representation of the dolls were, were babies. She had this great idea. She created Barbie. Right. What made Barbie different, because remember I said you get paid for your differences, not just in the letters. What made it different was what? Made it small. Made it older. Who was older? Barbie. The doll, yes. Um, People no, thought it no, would not work. Yeah. They said, yeah, it's no way it's going to work to have a baby playing with an adult. They right. won't be attracted to that. Mm -hmm. But she understood something. She understood that, well, first of all, a side note, which is that people like to see in themselves their future, not right. their present. Right. That's a whole nother piece. But she understood the power of difference. Why create a doll that's a baby when there are all these other doll babies on the market? Right. So create something that's different. When people do something different, that's, what, that's how they get paid. That's how they get noticed. That's how they get recognized. Mm -hmm. So as we talk about your personal branding or your right. personal brand, I want you to begin to think about what, are, what makes you different. So this is how you want to start talking about it. Remember these circles? Yes. Passions, skills, I'm going to put gifts, strengths slash gifts. This at the intersection of your natural gifts, the things you were born with, your skills, the things you do particularly well, your passions, the things you love, that's the heart of where your brand is. The key is to be able to articulate this. Now let me tell you something, the best brands, the best brands are able to be articulated on a bumper sticker. I've heard it put it this way, if you can't put it on a bumper sticker, it's probably not clear in your mind. Yeah. Can you talk about yourself in one sentence? Yeah, no, that's deep. Sure, you want to be able to do it in a page, but people don't necessarily have a page. People's attention spans aren't there. Right. Think about great political campaigns. Great political campaigns are able to be shortened to a bumper sticker. I'm sure. How do you want to be known? Yeah. And what do you right. want to be known for? This is before we even, we'll continue this discussion into, I guess, the job realm. But right now what I'm talking about is general. Because if you're able to know what you want to be known for in the world, period, then you'll be able to know how you want an employer to see. The problem is a lot of these programs focus on, this is what I want you to say in the interview, but you're not really clear on yourself who you are. You're not clear on yourself what makes you different. See, there's three buckets. There's having, doing, 
and being. Have Most it. folks are unhappy. Have I have a nice job. I have a good uh, 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 portfolio. Yeah. I have a degree. Yeah. I have a nice car. Yeah. Some folks get to the place of doing. I've done this for the world, and I've done that for the world, and I volunteer in the soup kitchen, and I go to church a lot, and I write books. But who are you? A lot of people don't know that they are separate for more than from happy. doing and having. Gotcha. They're confused. And you know how they're confused? You ask them, who are you? I'm a lawyer. No, you, you do legal work. You have a law degree. I'm bigger than that. I had somebody say that the other day. Oh, I know who you are. You graduated from Harvard Law School. Yeah, that's what I did. Yeah. It's not who I am. And so part, what personal branding is, is, is who you are. Now I'm going to close with this. Look at this. And this is how you, this, remember we talked about having, make sure you write this down. Having, doing, being. It used to be that commercials focus on the having and the doing. When the Super Bowl comes next week, I want you to notice the best commercials. <laughs> Some of the best commercials, if you notice, yeah, okay. they don't even tell you the features. See, there's two types of things. You have features of something, and then you have the essence of it. You'll start to see car commercials. They don't even mention the car. Nope. Because they're not worried about the doing and the having. They're, worried of, they're talking about being. That's what made Nike different. Nike didn't focus on the features of the product. They focused on a lifestyle of athleticism, of being great. Just do it. Yeah, they just do it. Now, I want to be like Mike. Yeah. So they put great sports figures and icons. So when you begin to talk about yourself, when you begin to talk about yourself, you have to understand that your, the essence of who you are is not what you do. No, it's fine to talk about that in the interview. I'm not saying don't. And it is fine to talk about what you have. You should. I have these trainings. I have these certificates. I have a double major. I have a master's. I have uh, a certification to teach it. I have dreams to do this, this, and that. But who am I? Because when all that, if all that is taken away, who the heck am I? Who am I? Not what do I have. Not what do I do. Who am I? Well. Most programs start here. They start at half. They never even make it to B. I feel like if I can get you to who you are, the rest will come out. Because that's your core. Then I can brain yourself. Then I, yes, because that's the essence of who you are. Right. Exactly. That's what allows me, no matter what the career is, no matter what the job is, who I am, if you ask me who I am, I'm a motivator.